Hello and a warm welcome back to Talk Norwich City. Well, exciting news. And um, David Wagner is set to become or might already be the new Norwich City manager, depending on when you're watching this. I'm sure you all know a little bit about him already, but to find out more, we're joined by a very special guest today. I'm sure you know his face, and if not, you certainly know his voice. It's Ali Maxwell from the Not The Top 20 podcast and of Sky Sports fame as well. Um, Ali, thanks so much for joining us on here today. Um, how's things? Really well, thank you. Uh, always a treat to, to join you, Jack, to talk... Norwich City to talk football, championship football in, in in particular, as you know, is one of my favourite topics. Uh, all, all well here, George, my NTT20 partner and myself have been very busy this week to kick off the year with a, a show on Sky Sports called EFL 21 Under 21, which goes out on Friday evening. That's the 6th of January on, on Sky Football. For those who don't have Sky, you can watch it, uh, all the clips on the Sky Sports website. There are 21 players, 21 and under uh, from Championship League One and League Two, we think they're the, the brightest prospects. No Premier League loanies. We know there are lots of talented Premier League loanies, but this is focusing on EFL contracted players. And when it comes to Norwich City, there is more than one bit of interest, let's say. So hopefully uh, some of the, the, the viewers would like to see who we've uh, chosen and who we're excited about. Absolutely. There's a, there's a few to choose from from Norwich. Um, I know <laughs> yeah. you gave me a, a little exclusive. There's a couple in there, so well worth tuning in the Sky Sports this evening. It will be a brilliant watch. I'm sure plenty of you will. Um, Ali, let's get on to David Wagner then. Um, an, an, an appointment that maybe some predicted for, for Norwich. It's been a, a shocking season so far for, for the majority. I guess with Dean Smith, what do you think went wrong? Because he's a, he's a coach that clearly is, is switched on, has done well at the majority of his previous appointments. But it just never was particularly going in the direction that we, we wanted. Um where, where did you think the, the, the beginning of the end started? Well, I mean, you guys will have spent even more time than I have trying to work it all out. Um, I think this is one of them which have which has a lot of different aspects to it that kind of mixed together, created a, a really t tricky situation and a, a hugely underperforming football team, football club, if you like. Um I have a, a few bits of sympathy for Smith and the job that he walked into. Um, five points from 11 games in the Premier League, I think it was when he when he walked in, or at least um, was there a, a win just before he arrived? I can't remember the exact details. But it was, it was a team at the bottom of a division where the odds are already completely stacked against you uh, in order to, to survive. Um, and, you know, everyone else had a head start. So I, I have sympathy in the sense of, I could see how that would be a hard situation to get a grip on, um, a hard situation for fans to become convinced by you, because frankly, when results aren't going your way, which in the Premier League they clearly weren't, then fans are, are always unlikely to warm to you. So for me, there's there's a sort of situational aspect, which was kind of a, odds are stacked against Dean Smith and Norwich City at that time. I think keeping him for this season to attack the top end of the championship was Norwich kind of saying, you know what? We recognise that we put you in that situation. Sure, you didn't overperform and you didn't provide the sort of miracle, if you like, that we were hoping for. But we're also not going to pretend that relegation from where we were is some sort of disgrace. And we hired you because we thought you were the best option. We thought you had a certain track record. And we think that's worth, you know, giving a chance. But maybe on the personality side as well, which never felt like a great fit, the indifference from the fan base, clearly a little bit too strong. Uh, and then a few other factors, the summer transfer business. It doesn't look great in hindsight, does it? Like I was as excited as anyone when you signed two kids from South uh, South America. Um, and individually, I think that they're both good players and I could see them being part of a very high performing Norwich City side. But I also look at a squad halfway through the season that has some pretty clear weaknesses in it. And I wonder whether using that amount of money on those two players was necessarily the right way to go. So those are a few aspects. And then, you know, not to criticise Smith too much, but I must admit, even in previous jobs with Brentford and Villa, I was never convinced that he, his teams were that solid defensively. It always seemed like a weakness mm. of his as a coach. They never seemed as solid as you want them to be. That was clearly the case with Norwich City this season. And while he'd previously coached some good attacking football, uh, that didn't really come come either. So, yeah, lots to, to unpack, lots to, to chew on, if you like. But also, um, probably time to move on from, from talking about Dean Smith and look towards the future. Absolutely. It'll be fascinating to see whether Smith 
bounces straight back into work or maybe has a, a bit of time out. Let's talk about Wagner then. Um, at time of recording, there's been no official announcement, but we're expecting it in the coming days or it may have already happened by the time this has come out. I think people will be aware of, of Wagner from his time at Huddersfield. Um, he's managed club since then, but Huddersfield is the team where I guess he, he shot to fame and, and had success. I remember watching that side um, come to Carroll Road and just being so impressed with them. And it was a it was almost a breath of fresh air to the championship at that stage. I think it was a style of football that we maybe hadn't seen too regularly. Mm. What exactly did he do to to get that side going and 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 achieve promotion and then also achieve a, a season of, of relative success in the Premier League as well? Yeah, it was almost the reverse of, of how I feel things have been for Smith and Norwich for the last year. I would say it was almost the, the sort of perfect storm. Loads of different positive aspects just coming together all at the right time. Um, some of them entirely down to Wagner, some of them down to what the club did in order to support him. Um, at, at first, it, it's it's a really fun exercise this because this was right at the start of when we started the podcast. I think our third ever episode was 2016, 2017 championship pre-season predictions. And it was a year quite famously that Ian Holloway predicted Huddersfield to finish 24th. And we predicted them to finish, <laughs> I think, fifth or sixth, which is where they did finish in one promotion. So it was an early win for us uh, on that front. Um, but at first, there was like there was a sort of standard novelty stuff that that seemed quite popular, like oh, he was Jurgen Klopp's best man at his wedding, and you know he wears a cap and glasses, and he's got a degree in biology and sports science, and and it was it was interesting listening to him talk about the game. But pretty quickly, it became for us more like oh, damn, I, th I think he's. I think he's turning around a club that was kind of just like sputtering along for, for quite a few years at that point. Um, there are a few aspects of his appointment that I don't really think apply to Norwich City in 2023. Whether that's a, a bad thing, I don't know. But like he was their first foreign manager. And so there was a certain bit of excitement, exoticism, if you like, that came with that. The fans were pretty excited to buy into something that they hadn't um, necessarily experienced before. And he did bring... A lot of innovation at that time with him, um, you know, along with with, of course, Stuart Weber, who was there and who appointed him. There were things like a, a preseason trip to the Swedish wilderness, I seem to remember, to, to build team <laughs> spirit. There was, you know, he would he would hold training sessions at differing times of the day rather than the same time every day, um, depending on what time their next match was played, whether it was a, a, an afternoon game or an evening game. They they stayed in the hotel in Huddersfield even before home games. And there were there were big talk of big upgrades in terms of things like nutrition and analysis and scouting. Now, these made a big impact on a club that hadn't wasn't really doing stuff like that before. But I don't think that's really the case at Norwich City. So those sorts of, of gains, if you like, initial obvious gains and, and improvements are probably not as obvious uh, in this sense. The style of football was 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 exciting, you know, when it first came in, and and at that time, it, it felt kind of no holds barred. There was a lot of intensity out of possession, some really good um, pressing, really good, uh, clearly very well drilled, great shape without the ball, you know, sending teams into areas of the pitch that they wanted them to pass into so that they could set traps and win the ball high. Reminds me a little bit of what. Corberan's West Brom look like at the moment and of course the sexy side is is attacking football and possession football but actually the stuff out of possession is just as important for a promotion as anything that you do with the ball so that that's probably what stood out most the the pressing the out of possession stuff that they weren't an incredible attacking team I'm sure people will know they they got promoted with a negative goal difference so clearly they weren't this like dominant force I think it's worth pointing out that the players that they had at at their disposal and particularly up front, nowhere near the quality of, of Norwich's current squad. So there were guys like Aaron Moy who just became championship superstars under uh, David Wagner. And I guess that's what we'd be hoping happens at, at Norwich City. So it was, it was kind of a perfect storm. Like he was intelligent and charismatic. The club itself did brilliantly to capitalise on on him kind of starting to rouse the fan base. They offered cheap tickets. They really used the, the positive energy to whip things up. And it was kind of like this great big tidal wave of, of success for, for a couple of years. So I, I would hope that, you know, if the fans do come round to him, if you get some good positive early results, then the club act on that and, and try and sort of smooth things over with the fan base. Then I think that could be very powerful. And oh, that's really good to hear. You mentioned there, Stuart Weber, of course, hired um, Wagner during his time at Huddersfield. It was his first managerial appointment. He's now going back to, to Wagner. He's had success with Daniel Farker at, at Norwich City. I think some of the 
the more pessimists uh, amongst us will, will be claiming that this is maybe a lazy appointment from Stuart Webber. He's, he's simply going back to what he knows and trusts. Would you say that's a fair assessment or, or do you think this, this could well work for Norwich? I think it is a very understandable thing to be concerned about at this time. I also think that, and we see this, I mean, how many championship managers have lost their jobs already this season? How many new appointments have we spoken about seemingly every single week on the pod? What you notice when you cover a ton of different clubs and a ton of different hires is that there's almost always one thing about a new manager that can be pointed at as seemingly unideal, that, that could be pointed at as a negative, whether maybe they have failed somewhere before, because frankly, in the way that the modern football is, most managers have, whether it might be a perceived style of play or whether it might be that they're too old or too young, you know, inexperienced, those sorts of things. I would say there's always something to point at. And, and you know, I guess with Wagner, there's the last two jobs at Schalke and Young Boys. I'm not a um, an expert on exactly what happened there, but clearly you know, not particularly good jobs for him or successful. Uh, and then there's this aspect, the fact that he has worked before with Stuart Webber. I wouldn't say that that alone makes this a lazy appointment personally. Um, I think the good relationships between key members of a football club are generally a good thing rather than a bad thing. Um, a, a sense of familiarity or a comfort in working together, I think is probably a good thing, uh, albeit you, you kind of have to go on a case-by-case -case basis. I'd also say... Even if you're unhappy with how things have gone in the last two years at Norwich City, and particularly with the role of Stuart Webber and how things have gone from, from such success to whatever we've seen in the last 18 months, I still don't believe that Webber and the others around him would be lazy or would take this lightly. Like mm. They are professionals. They have jobs to do. The decisions that they make, and very specifically these decisions that they make, have a huge impact on both their current job, but also their future jobs, their future successes, if they're ambitious people. So sometimes their decisions don't pay off and no managerial appointment is a sure thing. But I'd never use the word lazy really in this scenario, because I think there's too much at stake, both financially for the club and professionally um, for that to be the case. And just lastly on this, I think I thought of quite a good analogy, actually, um, about this. Uh, and it comes back to uh, the channel Talk Norwich City, like... Weber and Wagner had astonishing success at Huddersfield, okay? So one of Weber's career highlights and something that catapulted him into being considered one of, at that time, the English game's brightest sporting directors. And I think a way of looking at it is like, you and Chris set up TNC <laughs> together. And over the years, you've had some amazing success. You've, you've loved working together. I've no doubt that some of your individual career successes will have been helped by what you've done on this channel. And you know each other really well. And most specifically, you know tangibly know the skills that you both have in in the jobs that you do so imagine that chris let's say goes off and and does a few other things that don't go very well in a similar space like a different type of show different circumstances working with different people who may be better or worse than you but let's say it doesn't really come off for him i think that you would still consider him to be good at what he does because you would know intimately what he can do in the right circumstances right so if it's your job to provide the right circumstances, and it is for Stuart Webber, and if you back yourself to do that, even if you've had a bad year or so, then it stands to reason you'd be confident of achieving success again. I think that's that's a way of looking at it. Well, I've never been compared to, to North Stuart Webber or, or Wagner, Alisa. I appreciate that hugely. <laughs> Um, it, I guess it, in terms of the squad then, finally, I, I know that you'll be discussing Wagner, I'm sure, on the podcast in future weeks. So I'll link um, not the top 20 down in the description. I'm sure the majority of our audience do already listen. I know a lot. It's often one of the few positives of getting relegated from the Premier League is the fact that we can all tune in again and, and, and have our team assessed by, by yourself and George. Just in terms of this squad and, and looking at the other um, squads in the Championship, I think it's probably fair to discount Burnley and Sheffield United from this chat at the moment. I think top two is probably gone for Norwich at this stage. But the, mm -hmm. the, the other teams who are all competing for the top six, do you think there's enough talent in this squad um, to, to achieve playoffs uh, at a bare minimum? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, think, I think two things are true. I don't think there is as much talent in this squad as there should be for a team in Norwich City's situation um, with, uh, you know, with a few seasons in the Premier League and, and all the financial trappings that that comes with. I know that there are um, 
you know plenty of of financial aspects of Norwich that that I won't necessarily know as intimately as others and I I gather that you know spending loads of money and and um, flexing financial muscle over the rest of the championship isn't something that the club can or will do right now but even so the the squad should be stronger and it shouldn't have as many imbalances as I perceive it to have in, in certain areas so I don't think that the depth at fullback is strong enough I'm not sure that I think there's probably a balanced midfield to find in there, but I don't think that's been achieved yet. Uh, I don't think there's enough quality in wide areas, attacking wide areas, and that's a crucial part of uh, of the modern game in the championship right now. So I don't think it's as good as it should be. I definitely think that it has enough to finish in the playoffs uh, with a manager who can just simplify things a little bit, just find a balance that works, find um, players playing it consistently in positions and in a system that suits them and there are quality quality players among the best players in the whole division in this squad you know Aaron's um, uh, can certainly impact games uh, in an attacking sense from fullback and that's really crucial Puki, we know I think Sargent could play uh, a role which is kind of nominally a right wing role I know this has been a bit of a, an issue for Norwich this season how do you play Sargent and Puki and get the best out of them Wagner played a 4-3-3 at Huddersfield, but one of the one of the wide forwards, Kachunga or Kwana it was, they, they weren't like winger types. They were basically strikers, number nines. They were hardworking players. They offered a goal threat and they, they did a, a really good job at both sort of defending wide areas, but also getting involved with the attack. And, and I, I see Sargent playing that role pretty well off the right side, just giving Aaron's the, the kind of license to do everything down the right side on an attacking sense, because I think he's quality 1v1 um, for his position. So... Yeah, I'm I'm feeling fairly positive if things can can go well. Uh, as I mentioned, Wagner didn't have very good strikers at Huddersfield, but they still scored enough goals. I'd expect them to score more goals with, with the players that you have. And if he can summon whatever he did at Huddersfield in terms of, of coaching you to press well and set really good traps and just, just suffocate the opponent, then that's going to open up way better scenarios for Norwich in attack than you ever had under Dean Smith, where, you know, you didn't win the ball back particularly well. You didn't defend particularly strongly. And so you're always starting from the back with a, de- with a team in a set defense against you and, and just never quite got it um, to work. So definitely a lot of ifs, um, but definitely a lot of questions about exactly what happened in his last two jobs. But I, I can also, I'm not the sort of ma- uh, person that writes off a manager based on one job going badly, two jobs going badly. I, I prefer to look at what they've done well why it might have worked and see if a club can recreate that and i do think that there's a there's a good chance that uh wagner does well uh, and i think doing well is is not too far off because i think doing well right now is establishing yourself in the playoff places they're not far off this is, division is not very strong uh and, and i do expect you to finish in the top six for sure well there we go uh that's excited me david wagner um reviewed and assessed by one of the sharpest minds in the EFL game. Uh, Well worth listening to Not The Top 20. I'm going to link the podcast feed down in the description. And if you do have Sky, then well worth checking out their feature uh, this evening on the the best young talent across the EFL. Um, Head over to Not The Top 20. Uh, Let us know what you think of David Wagner down in the comment section below. And we'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.